I don't believe in this sort of idea of architecture as some kind of preconceived idea that you try to sort of smash into, uh, into the world with no regard for how it's going to be used or who's going to be using it. When you're doing a, a city hall, it's very much about, you know, of, of course, like a lot of practical issues and the invitation of the public, but it's also very much about the identity, in this case, of a sort of a post-Soviet democracy that really wants to be about political transparency. We're not building buildings for ourselves. We're not building spaces for ourselves. The users are the experts in using the buildings. And if, you know, if you're doing a library, you need to speak with the librarians. Mm. If you're doing a, a, an urban space, you have to speak with the local population. We got invited to look at a competition for the city hall of Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. So we thought, let's put the city council uh, in the tower. Uh, let's give them an incredibly generous space uh, for the political debate. Um, the ceiling is made as a gigantic mirror so with, when politicians have to make difficult decisions, all they have to sort of do is look up and they get this sort of perfect periscope overview of the city that they're messing with. As a side effect, when the angry citizens gather to demonstrate, um, they get this sort of perfect bird's eye view. They can see if, um, if some politicians are sleeping or absent or doing dirty deals or playing angry birds on their iPhones. When we're doing a building, we're not just happy with you know, solving a standard apartment and then sort of repeating it uh, 10 times uh, to the left and uh, five times uh, up. Uh, and then we have like a nice stack and then we repeat that a series of times. Then you solved only one problem, which is like how to organize an apartment. But you didn't create a community and you didn't like exploit maybe the views and you didn't like pay any respect to the, to the neighbors. Our buildings look different because they perform different. What makes the Vancouver Tower look special is that it's maximizing the real estate investment in a very difficult site. The site is totally tortured by uh, this, uh, this highway bridge. Also, there was a park right next to the site where we're not allowed to cast shadows uh, after 10 o'clock in the morning. So we started map mapping the constraints. There's a setback requirement from the street. There's another setback from the highway. Then there's like almost a deal breaker, which is uh, a 30 meter setback from all of the highways because the city doesn't want anybody living and looking straight out at, the, at cars. Uh, and finally, because of the park, our footprint is reduced to a tiny 600 square meter triangle, uh, which is almost too small to, uh, to build. As soon as you know what is this building going to do, you can start and who's going to be using it and how, they, how they're using it, and how, what is their complaints of, of where they are now, what, will, what are they dreaming about for the future. Then you can start informing your design decisions with information. But we thought like since our client owns the whole site, as soon as we come up in the air, we can come back out uh, and basically maximize the amount of the nicest apartments. So basically, uh, as you drive over the bridge, it's like somebody pulling a curtain aside, sort of welcome to Vancouver. Resource consciousness is for the real world in the design studio. The more garbage you produce in the design process, the less garbage you end up building. And in that sense, following what you enjoy in many ways is what could turn into something that could be read as talent or, or, or capacity.